uh, since um, um, it's uh, actually a distraction as well as it's increased the video size, I will, uh, I'm gonna switch off my video. Um, uh, just be before you start, uh, I will just uh, uh, mention a few things about how we're gonna conduct this. Um, so we're gonna have two sessions, uh, uh, on one on literature search, uh, how to find uh, um, the research material, previous work and so on. Um, uh, and then uh, we will, uh, next we will see how to manage those, uh, what we found uh, effectively. Um, now, um, uh, one of the things is that uh, um, as, um, uh, Professor Madhujit also said, uh, I'm actually uh, with a few of my colleagues as Professor Ragal and Dr. Professor Benaragam, we have been doing this uh, online teaching and um, other workshops around the country as well. But um, one of the things that all of you who are engaging in online teaching and learning would, uh, I think, agree with is that uh, there's nothing uh, like uh, uh, in-person or interactive uh, uh, teaching. Um, so we are trying. We are trying different ways to uh, make it efficient. Actually, in in fact, we are actually mostly work uh, encourages blended learning. But uh, complete online uh, sessions like this sometimes have uh, uh, certain difficulties. I have conducted this uh, workshop uh, uh, completely interactively in person, uh, which has the best outcome because we can see. Uh, what type of uh, uh, difficulties everybody has and uh, give suggestions, personalized uh, suggestions and uh, guidance. Um, I have conducted this completely online as well uh, with a very uh, level of success. Um, uh, so uh, what uh, uh, we're gonna do is um, since we have um, a very a a large, uh, a diverse group of participants, um, it will be difficult to adjust to everybody because uh, I see that there are many who have, uh, uh, they are already using uh, reference management software and all who are, who have already obtained doctorates as well and also undergraduates. So um, because of that, um, I'm uh, not going to try to make it interactive uh, by uh, force, but, um, um, I would encourage you to um, post your um, problems or questions um, so that uh, we can address those as we go on or in, in uh, intervals. Uh, now, since it's very difficult, a uh, bit difficult to uh, trace um, the questions in uh, Zoom, um, uh, we would use uh, um, another, uh, uh, online tool called Padlet. Uh, so you can um, um, you can go to this uh, uh, site. I will put it in uh, the chat box as well. Um, it's padlet.com slash asita b slash urc. Uh, let me just show you how it works. Um, so in Padlet, uh, uh, you will see this kind of, uh, uh, in your browser, you will see a screen and you can actually add a post uh, by going and clicking on this plus sign here. Uh, you can give a title and you can write your questions here. Um, uh, and then you can see it and others can actually even rate it up or down as well so that we will see what questions are common um, and you can add comments as well you can even answer other people's questions uh, in this one uh, so um, uh, in uh, at in intervals we will look at uh, uh, the questions here as well um, so that um, uh, we would not miss any questions because if you uh, type a lot of questions in uh, the chat uh, we, it is very hard to track um, okay um, Uh, 
Okay, so um, as I said, uh, we will start with the uh, literature search. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, um, all of you are aware what literature search is. Um, usually I ask uh, the questions why uh, we uh, stand on, uh, why uh, we, we do the literature uh, search. Um, so uh, just uh, the, the, there are many, many answers that I get usually, but uh, uh, the one I uh, really like is what you see usually in Google Scholar, is what you see in Google Scholar, um, uh, which states that uh, to stand on the shoulders of giants, basically uh, to base your work uh, on what others have done um, and uh, move forward. So that's basically the, the, the entire concept of uh, research that based on what others have done to advance it further. Um, so while it is searched so that you know what has been going on, what is possible and to see what you can do. Uh, the other, other question is when and why would you do literature search? Um, Professor Madhuj also mentioned uh, this. Um, so usually um, when I ask this question, um, normally what I get is that at the beginning of research that before you do just to just to look at uh, what has been done, uh, what is possible and so on to gain knowledge or uh, gather knowledge, uh, you will uh, do literature search. But um, uh, anybody with experience in doing research, especially PhDs or long term research actually knows that um, uh, when uh, not only at the beginning, but uh, you will have to um, uh, um, do literature search while conducting research uh, because uh, you know things can go wrong or things you, you find new things. Uh, so you need to go and search for more. You you have different uh, outcomes, results, just to go and find why these things are, uh, and just to ensure that uh, what what you are doing has not been done other places while you're doing it. So there are many reasons that you, you conduct literature research while you're conducting um, research. And, um, 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 and the third one is that um, you will do when you're publishing your research, um, because um, once again, you had to, first of all, uh, identify when see whether uh, this has not been done previously. Now, I, by the time you are conducting the research, somebody else has not published it um, and but that's the the usual thing but most of the time what happens is um, you have to you know justify your research uh, and so on and then uh, most of the time your introduction and the motivation and all that we see a uh, lot of a um, lot of researchers go and try to find these things at the end of the research because now you have to justify uh, what you have done why you have done it and so on um, so ideally, even though you just check whether you know, these things are done and this is justifiable, you need to, you know, when you're writing, especially you need to uh, reference the materials, cite the material. So you uh, go and try to search for things uh, um, uh, to put in your uh, theses, your papers and so on. Um, so, so that's, uh, that, so we can see that, you know, we need to do this in many, at many times. Um, and throughout your research, so if once you, you start your academic or research career, you will have to keep doing these things uh, and refer back to a lot of things that you have been looking at in the past. Um, now, um, uh, so the idea is that, uh, that you don't um, reinvent the wheel, basically, as I mentioned. Um, so it's very, very important uh, to uh, spend time on literature search. Uh, it could be international, it could be local, depending on the, the subject area. And now in my area, computer engineering um, and uh, uh, related areas, most it's uh, almost everything because it's, a, it's an essence, it's a new area. Most of the things are online. Um, uh, so you can uh, go and find most of the material online, but uh, uh, in other areas, um, uh, things are, some things are online, uh, but um, most of the local sources, like say,
Sorry, it seems that I actually kind of got dropped off. I didn't realize. Uh, Madhushani? Uh, yeah, Dr. Bandar Naika, we are there. Yes, sir, now we can hear you. Yes. Uh, can you tell me where I dropped off? So you need to share your screen. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, it's on how. Okay. Okay. Extremely sorry about that. Just. Yeah. So. Um, so we will be focusing on um, looking at the uh, the international sources or finding the, the literature um, which are um, available online. Now, why this, why we need to focus on this one um, is um, basically um, because um, what we can consider as like, you know, the, the world's biggest haystack, uh, the internet, which where there are Millions, billions, and billions of uh, information is added um, every single day, and uh, the task is to um, find the needle or the needles. Now, how to find the needle uh, or the needles? Um, um, even though there are many uh, tools to do, uh, the quite the, the the most favorite uh, or the most used is. Uh, uh, Google, uh, which has kind of become a verb in itself. Uh, so why do people Google? You can just use it as a verb as well, because it's uh, quite fast. It even tells you uh, how fast uh, and uh, brings up large number of results. Uh, as you can see, uh, it will tell you how long it took and about the number of results that it has found. Um, so I will um, advise you to actually um, keep uh, uh, we will when one when you when you go through different uh, methods to search uh, keep um, uh, your eye on this number of results that it pops up as well what it says here uh, because it has uh, quite significance on uh, uh, how to conduct our search and how to make it uh, do it effective um, and then you know it has uh, it's quite uh, good in finding the the best results uh, in its first page um, so this was quite different uh, previous, before Google, uh, we used to have uh, search engines like um, uh, Alta Vista, Yahoo, and so on, which used to be a directory service. So Google quite changed it with their, um, um, uh, algor uh, their algorithm uh, to find information, um, which is called a, a page rank. I'm not going to go into the details, but it just basically uh, identify which one, which page has a better, um, uh, better relevance to what we are searching. So they have main algorithms and some features that are well known. Uh, and also there are many other details, machine learning techniques, which try to find it's, and even um, your own searches, your own preferences as well. So I assume that uh, you know that uh, Google actually saves what you are searching, which you can disable. Uh, if you want to know, we can discuss that later. But um, Google actually keep track of what you search and what you are interested in in providing you with the results when you search, um, which makes it even more personalized than uh, uh, a, 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 a just a, a random search uh, or a, um, what do you call uninformed search that it'll do. Uh, so it's uh, quite good in doing that, but we are not going to focus on um, uh, Google search, uh, even though most of the things that we uh, would look at would be applicable to just Google search as well. Uh, for literature search, we uh, are going to specifically uh, focus on Google Scholar. Um, and um, as I assume every one of you are aware of uh, Google Scholar, uh, which you, allows you to um, search for um, scholarly articles, uh, books, journals, conference papers, etc. And, um, and then allow you to do it uh, uh, with uh, specific features um, 
uh, or options uh, that are not in basic Google. Yeah, you can uh, search by a title, author, publication years, um, citations, related articles, and so on. Uh, now, when you're searching in Google Scholar, you need to be aware of uh, how these, thing, these uh, results are given to you. Um, uh, because it's, um, it's uh, knowing that will help you to actually find exactly what you are looking for, uh, rather than just a blind search and just getting everything in the first few pages and so on. Um, so uh, now when you look at um, um, Google Scholar search, it's uh, based on um, a number of criteria. Now, if you look at this criteria, you will see that it is uh, um, the same uh, importance that you would normally give a research paper. Um, uh, so basically how often it has been cited in other scholarly literature. So, so if a paper is cited more in a um, uh, more, it is uh, definitely more relevant or more important uh, than something that is not cited that much. Um, whether the full text of the document is available, um, because uh, even though even if you can find a, um, a scholarly article with uh, uh, which is quite relevant, but if you can't get the full text of that document, then uh, definitely it's of less value to us. Um, where it was published, if it's in a high impact journal, uh, definitely it has more value uh, than a, uh, uh, some obscure conference and so on. Uh, who it was written by, if uh, the author has a higher H index, um, it's a highly cited uh, author, then it is much more important than uh, somebody who's uh, very new to the area. Um, and how recently it has been cited in other scholarly literature. Uh, that there could be uh, uh, an article which has been cited uh, um, many a times, but uh, probably uh, it has not been cited in the last few years to means that it is not relevant or important anymore. Or, so, so these factors, I mean, if you look at these factors, of course, this is how we would, um, identify a good source of information as well. So this is basically the main criteria in Google Scholar as well. Um, now, when you go to Google, Google Scholar, um, you can go to, uh, at, the, at the bottom, you can see the, uh, the, the, the about and the settings at, uh, of um, uh, Google Scholar. And if you go there, you can actually get al almost all the information I'll be talking about here. Um, uh, it will tell you how these things are done um, and how the search is done and all these metrics as, as, as well. Um, so all this information is available. So you can also go and look at those things later uh, if and when necessary. Um, uh, there's help available as well. So which will tell you uh, about most of the things that I will be talking about. Um, um, so where you can go and you know um, uh, refresh these things or even learn more about these things in these uh, places. Um, so with that introduction to Google Scholar, um, let's um, uh, uh, go to look at how to search in Google Scholar effectively. So specifically when we do say um, uh, literature search, we will be specifically looking at um, how to use, um, do this in uh, Google Scholar. Um, now, before I move on, um, um, uh, how we are gonna, how I'm gonna conduct this one is that I'm gonna go um, uh, quite uh, slowly. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, um, I have done this in many ways. Um, um, uh, so as I said, uh, doing it interactively, getting the, you, the participants to do their search and use these things uh, um, at the time actually uh, give the best results. Uh, doing it online, we have tried uh, many different ways. I have tried many different ways. Um, so this is also, as I, as I, um, as I also keep telling in, in one, my, my online teaching learning and blended learning uh, workshops, you know, these are like, uh, uh, 
we are experimenting, even though we also go and teach about those things, we keep, uh, we keep ex experimenting on uh, different uh, or most effective way to do the, the, these type of workshops, uh, webinars or courses online. So what I'm going to do today is to go very slowly, um, giving you time to um, um, do these uh, simple tricks uh, um, or search uh, methods. Uh, on your own. So what I would suggest uh, is that um, you think about one uh, a research topic that you are working on, a very specific area, not a broad area, a uh, very specific topic that you are working on or looking at, uh, so that you can um, quickly try these things so to look at the different results you get, um, so that uh, you will understand uh, these, um, these um, features, options uh, much better. Uh, just to go by um, uh, a proverb that uh, we actually, I used to hear this a lot at the, the Staff Development Center, STC program. Uh, I hear, I forget, uh, I see, I remember, and I do, I understand. So let's try to do this um, uh, as we go. Um, but since, you know, since I cannot track what everybody's doing, I'm trying, I will try to uh, go at a, at a certain level. Um, I would appreciate if you could, uh, 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 let me know. I mean, I, uh, in the feedback. So how uh, well it uh, how well it went? Because uh, as I said, uh, we are always learning how to how best to do these things. So uh, I would appreciate your feedback on that, so that uh, you know we can um, I can uh, improve this uh, with your feedback to do it better uh, as we in the future. Okay. So um, going on to uh, Google Basics. Um, um, uh, very simple ones. Uh, first, uh, we won't do any searches for this one because these things are very, very basic and uh, we are not going to test those out. Um, case doesn't matter. Um, so the uppercase, lowercase, uh, Google won't mind. Uh, they will just search as it is. Um, it will uh, fix spelling errors automatically. Um, so if you we have seen uh, if you uh, type it uh, wrong, it will correct automatically. And um, uh, first important uh, factor um, that um, word order and phrases, I assume most of you are, or almost every one of you is aware of uh, these phrases that yeah, you can put um, double quotes, um, uh, which will mean it's a phrase. Uh, we will see uh, it next once again. Um, so word order matters. Um, so depending on which order that you have, especially uh, the longer the number of words that you have, uh, the, the, there will be more importance or higher number of points to the first word compared to the last word. So change in the word order will give you different results. Um, you can try that out. You can try that, at the, try that out as we go along. Uh, try to uh, change the order of the words. Um, so, um, so what it says is that, you know, if you are looking at a specific uh, thing, uh, uh, you need to identify what is the most important thing in this one and the next one and the next one, which will, so it's not a, like a phrase, it's not like a sentence where you put and it will give you results because the results would focus on the, the words that are appearing at the beginning rather than, uh, so the, all the results would be there, but it will be given to you in the order that is given more importance to the first uh, words instead of the last words there. Uh, so you have to, you can actually, you know, change this around and see what type of results you get to find the exact results you want. Okay. Um, so we'll start with the, the phrases. Um, now, um, when you put, uh, when you put the quotes, uh, it will search for that exact phrase. Um, um, as in the order that is given, right? which means that there will be no other word between the, those keywords. Uh, so that if you say, so example, uh, um, drought resistant, 
uh, which is in quotes, uh, it will look for drought resistance together, as we will see uh, later. Uh, it, um, Um, so if you look at drought resistant, um, so if you, if you have this without quotes, uh, it will be like drought resistant rice, Sri Lanka, uh, you will see results that are given um, uh, for, let's say, for example, um, uh, drought tolerance, which, because Google will search for uh, synonyms um, and uh, give, uh, based on other criteria, use synonyms and give you results uh, which are uh, uh, closer to uh, the meaning. Um, but if you say drought resistant, uh, it has to contain that phrase exactly. Uh, and if you want this on Sri Lanka specifically, because if you look, just search for drought resistant rice, um, and even Sri Lanka is there, you will sometimes see that uh, uh, results for other countries prop up, uh, like places like, you know, uh, India much more than for Sri Lanka, but when you say Sri Lanka, you're saying, I want this phrase to be there in my search. Um, so it will give you uh, much better results uh, if you use uh, uh, quotes um, uh, or the phrases. Um, and um, also uh, now, um, uh, when you're using, uh, when you have phrases, um, one of the problems is, uh, like so for example, let's say uh, so something like Alexander Graham Bell. If you're searching for Alexander Graham Bell, um, you can search for Alexander Graham Bell uh, and it will give you some results. Um, so I don't have the results here. So let's uh, just look at a uh, uh, particular search uh, to see how this will work. So if you look at, uh, say for example, Alexander Graham Bell, if you just search without uh, any quotes, uh, it will show you, um, you can see uh, 206,000 uh, results with, uh, you know, there'll be Alexander Graham Bell, Alexander Graham Bell and so on. But uh, if you say Alexander Bell, the, diff the, the number of searches, uh, the results are different. As you can see, instead of uh, 206,000, it has 2.2 million results. Um, uh, and then um, there's uh, different results there uh, compared to what we have. Um, and uh, if you want to search for Alexander Graham Bell, but you don't know whether the, it will be uh, written as Alexander Bell or Alexander G Bell or Alexander Graham Bell, uh, what we can do is what we to use, what do we call a, a, a wildcard. Uh, which is the star or asterisk that we have. Um, so you see here, Alexander, anything, anything could mean um, uh, a letter, a word or nothing at all. Uh, so you will see when you put that one, it's actually uh, reduced the number of results because Alexander Graham Bell could just have Alexander or Graham or Bell as well. So in here, you only have 47,000 results. Uh, it could connect to Alexander Graham Bell as well as, um, you know, L Bell, uh, A.G. Bell and so on. So, um, so as you can see by just doing like putting quotes, um, uh, putting quotes uh, will uh, uh, restrict the results just for that phrase. Now, if I remove this uh, um, wildcard, I will... I've been using Google search for a lot. Um, so it will give you different type of uh, results. Okay, so um, so you, you need to see how much, uh, what type of results you get um, uh, to, um, to see um, uh, what are you really getting what you want and how you can change that and so on.
Um, so the next uh, thing is um, you can uh, uh, especially do this for uh, uh, title search. Um, so for example, uh, something like uh, a wild white boy. Uh, uh, a novel written by R.L. Spittle. Uh, um, and then if you just search for wild white boy, it will give you many different results uh, uh, which are not quite relevant or um, not what exactly you are looking for. But um, if you want just the entire title, wild white boy, and if it's in quotes, um, you will get exactly uh, the results you want, uh, most probably. Um, right. um, so you can uh, uh, try this out to see. Now you can see here also uh, 503,000 uh, compared to 12 results when, it, when you're having it in quotes. Right? Um, so uh, depending on uh, uh, what you want, you can uh, put the different things in quotes uh, to try those out. Okay. Um, Um, so, uh, so the uh, the keyword search, as I said, um, um, you have to um, design on the decide on the main concept, um, uh, and then uh, have uh, use from the the most significant to least significant of those uh, keywords in your search, which will give you the exact results you are looking for. Uh, you need to avoid uh, words that are vague or have multiple meanings because you, you will see when you search. Right? So there's no way to say like what are the vague words or what are the um, ambiguous words that you will have. But when you when you search, uh, when you search, you will see that uh, uh, the results you are getting actually give are relevant to a different meaning of the word so that you can actually go and put a different word there uh, for that uh, whatever vague word so that it'll actually improve the result. So it's always a trial and error. So I would never know what to tell you when you, if you ask me a question, how to search for this, it's always trial and error. Uh, you need to do different things, change things uh, and see how, what results you are getting um, and whether it's relevant to you. Uh, whether you're getting too much and if you can't figure out uh, you can get the exact thing you want or that you don't get any results at all uh, so which is also which also happens right? um so it's always a trial and error so you need to do these things so you need to think about think about alternative spe uh, spellings you have the british versus us uh, spelling and other type of spelling as well you can have uh, abbreviations for example um, my area, yeah, there's IoT, which also says as Internet of Things. Uh, Cisco says it Internet of Everything, and so on. So, um, uh, so that uh, you can have different uh, type of uh, different terms or uh, acronyms for the same thing. So you need to ensure that you capture all these, um, and uh, the broader and narrower meaning of the the original keyword. So the the, the key idea is that. Um, uh, you're going to um, lose a lot of informa useful information if you don't search for alternative terms of the keywords. Right? So um, you need to keep trying uh, different things. I will, we will try to summarize what this means exactly. Okay. Um, um, now, when you search, um, um, uh, another important thing to um, remember is that um, uh, in any search, we have what we call uh, stop words, which are common words such as uh, the, and to, in, where, how, um, and so on. And also single digits and single letters and so on, uh, which doesn't add meaning to the search. So, because these, these uh, terms, these words appear in so many pages, um, it doesn't uh, help uh, find the relevant results. So we need to understand if, if you put all these things, it um, it doesn't um, add anything to the research so that it will not be considered, but uh, there's a, a word of caution because it's not exactly 
uh, completely ignored um, because in um, in Google search uh, they give uh, a they give a value to the uh, proximity of the terms. So, for example, if you search for a term like rice field and rice in the field, now you can see the result two results here. Now, if you search for rice field, even though it's not in quotes, um, since the rice field is given uh, uh, as a, um, two words uh, close to each other, uh, the results you get at the top would have that uh, very close to that, that one. Um, uh, basically, like the same term. Uh, sometimes it might not. So that's when you need to put the quotes and say, I only want rice field as a phrase. Uh, but most of the time, you will see this uh, same uh, type of phrase, even without quotes coming to the top. If it's not, you'll have to put phrases to say, no, we, I want e everything to be just rice field. But here you see that, you know, the results at the top um, has these this two terms together. But if you put something like rice in the field, now the, these two words are three words apart. Um, and the results, you will see that it's not rice in the field that you get because in the, is are called stop words, they're not, they're ignored. But the proximity of these two words is considered. So you, even though rice in the, rice in the field contains rice field and in the is forgotten, uh, ignored, uh, the proximity is maintained. So rice straw open field is the first results you get because it's looking at you know how many times it is cited, where it is print, where it is published, and all the other uh, options that are there. And uh, the other one, rice reflectance at field. Right? So the proximity of facts. If you use these top words, that will be ignored, but the proximity will be maintained. So you have to be very careful. So you need to understand these things so that you can, uh, if you're getting, if you're not getting the, the right result, you need to understand this one. So if you want exactly rice in the field, then you'll have to put quotes and say that I want the exact term. Okay. Um, so are there any questions or you want to try out uh, these different these things, um, I will look up. Uh, as I said, uh, you can use the Padlet to post any question. Okay, if you have any questions, you can also raise your hands as well. Um, we can try this out uh, and uh, let me know. Um, and uh, also about the words that you put in uh, in Google search, um, it's usually uh, all the words are combined with that. I want this and that and that so that this all the words you put are automatically uh, connected uh, with uh, a key um, uh, the uh, the uh, keyword uh, and um, so uh, you can also put uh, and a uh, capital and in between to say I want this and this together usually shouldn't make a difference sometimes it does uh, so you can try both as well um, uh, just giving um, the two words um, and search uh, and put a end and the mid middle and see how uh, what you get. Uh, similar to end, uh, you can also uh, give an option. So here you actually say that uh, you want all the words to be there, which is the default. Uh, you also have um, um, alternative uh, 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 keyword where you can actually put um, O in between or a vertical bar say, uh, uh, I want articles with uh, this or that. So like, you know, you want to search for uh, the Cotia, you can search for Cotia or Leopard. 
so that um, it will give you the results uh, containing both um, so that um, that is possible and it is also possible for you to combine uh, uh, these two um, uh, where you have multiple alternate terms and another multiple alternate terms uh, right so uh, a combination of alternatives and another combination of alternatives of one of those and one of this. Right? Um, so um, you can put uh, round brackets uh, around the keywords to for O. So example, let's say for example, you want to discuss the therapy for tuberculosis. So it could be therapy or therapies or medicine or medicines or treatment or treating, which are all in round brackets. And tuberculosis or TB. So which will combine uh, the two together. Um, uh, so one of these, and so one of the words from the first group and one of the words from the second group. So it, you can combine like that one. So if you're not sure um, what word really you want, like, you know, therapy or treatment or medicine. So you can look at, you can capture everything um, uh, because like if you use just one word, as I said, uh, if you use one word, uh, it will have more significance in the results. So it will automatically consider synonyms, uh, but they will be at a lower significance compared to the relevance to your word. Those results could come up because of other citations and all that, but given for relevance for that particular keyword, uh, the given keyword have more marks than its synonyms. Uh, so if you give all the words and say, I don't care what of this word is there, then you will actually uh, get the correct importance to any of those uh, which are available. So you can try, but this is one of the things that I normally don't try often because rather than putting uh, all this together, it's easier to check for different combinations and find the results and see what I get. Uh, so normally I don't use that, but this is also a possibility that you can do. Uh, but I don't uh, most use this uh, because uh, uh, it's quite difficult to come up with this, all the possibilities uh, to find. Uh, it's better to just keep doing uh, trial and error with different combinations to find uh, uh, what exactly you are looking for. Uh, uh, another uh, important uh, um, factor is that uh, earlier we were looking at what we want to add. Um, sometimes we want to um, have um, results which exclude certain results. For example, let's say something like, uh, let's say you are looking for something, you are um, searching for something and uh, the results you get uh, is not relevant to um, uh, what you want. Um, uh, for example, if you search for Aboriginals, um, you will mostly get for Canada, Canadian and Australian Aboriginals. Um, and uh, you want to actually identify or look for Aboriginals uh, outside of uh, Canada and Australia. So you can give us Aboriginals uh, minus Canada minus Australia to say, please exclude these results. Now, if you uh, do so, you'll see that the results that you get um, as, um, so you, it is, talks about uh, Taiwanese Aboriginals and then Aboriginals in India, in West Bengal uh, and so on. So, you're actually getting, and uh, once again, um, when you look at this, uh, you'll see that you know the number of results, uh, when you're looking for Aboriginals, you are getting 70,000 results. Whereas uh, if you exclude Canada and Australia, you get a lower number of results. Um, so um, once again, if you, when you are searching for, um, when you're searching for any of these keywords that you are looking for and you are getting most of the time uh, you get um, um, results that are not relevant to exact one you are looking for because the most of the results in that area are 
for a specific um, part uh, or a specific subject that is not relevant to what your search is, you can actually exclude that saying, okay, I don't want anything to do with this aspect of this particular topic, uh, which you can easily uh, remove a large section of the results, which is dominating the, the, the search that you are doing. Um, and then um, um, going on to do uh, more into uh, scholar search, um, there are many filters that you can use. I, I assume uh, you, most of you are quite familiar with the, um, the dates or the years that you can actually uh, look for results uh, for a particular year or a, a, a range of years. Um, you can actually give this in, uh, in the, uh, search bar, but it's uh, much easier to do it in uh, search where in the um, left hand side where you can actually give custom range to say I want results be in between uh, 2000 published in between 2012 and 2013, right? So you can, or you can just do it like, you know, since 2020, since 2017 or uh, any particular um, uh, uh, range that you want, right? Uh, you can also uh, sort your results uh, by uh, the date. So as I said, uh, what, how Google Scholar um, sort your results is by the relevance, how relevant it is based on the criteria that we looked at earlier. But if you, uh, if you want the latest results um, that, uh, that is there, you can actually sort it by the date so that it'll give you the latest results first. So this is quite, uh, um, uh, quite um, useful, especially when you're conducting results and in the middle of your results and so on, just to keep, um, you know, uh, looking, you know, what has happened recently? Have I, have, is, has there been anything new? Of course, there's other ways to uh, do that as well, but um, something that you can search and also like, you know, when you search, as I said, the high most cited one will come to the top for a given topic, right? So you can actually um, uh, give the same thing and cite or sort by the date to look at what has, what has happened recently or what has been published recently uh, in this particular topic uh, so that um, you can know what type of things are happening in that area. You can also uh, filter by author. Um, now, uh, this is especially important uh, when you uh, uh, work with uh, foreign authors uh, because their names could be things that could come uh, to uh, the title or in the text. Uh, like, you know, the things like, you know, green and all these words that could occur. So as you can see, if you talk about photosynthesis green, it's um, of course, definitely there's green is there, but if you want the a paper about photosynthesis where the author is green, um, you can specifically say, I want the author uh, to be green um, or the author's name is green so that you will get only the, uh, the results uh, where the author is green rather than that uh, something that is related uh, to uh, the topic. Uh, this is also true for, especially for other languages, like, you know, especially uh, Chinese authors, they're, they're very, have very small um, names most of the time that get slipped through if you are looking for a specific author so that you can put it in the author field and um, look for those results. Um, so depending on, uh, so that uh, if you know the author that you can actually give the specific author and uh, look for it. Um, now, one of the uh, important things, another important thing is that uh, when you're searching for something, for example, I was uh, looking at this, uh, um, uh, so like drought resistant uh, rice in Sri Lanka. Uh, now, if you search for this one, um, you can see that, you know, uh, on the left hand side, um, uh, this drought rice and then Sri Lanka and um, um, Sri Lanka is actually in the text itself. Uh, so this is talking about the drought uh, rice uh, 
the issues of the right uh, rice cultivation uh, with respect to drought condition, but uh, not specifically relevant to Sri Lanka. This is Sri Lanka is mentioned, but not exactly about Sri Lankan conditions. So, if I if I want to find things about Sri Lankan context, you will assume that um, you can assume that uh, Sri Lanka would be most probably in the title itself. Uh, so. Uh, that you are talking about the dry, drought conditions uh, or drought tolerance resistance or so on and about rice cultivation and Sri Lanka so that all those are in the title so that it is very specific to this topic. So you can specifically say I want all this in the title with the option or the keyword saying all in title colon and you give these words so it will actually find very specific. So you can see the number of results, like it's 34,800 results when you say Sri Lanka rice drought. And I'm saying Sri Lanka is the most important, but still uh, the highest uh, uh, ranked one is where Sri Lanka is in just in the tech, but drought and rice are on the title itself. So I'm saying, no, I want Sri Lanka rice drought to be in title. And uh, I only get six results. So those six results are specifically relevant to um, uh, Sri Lanka uh, rice um, in drought conditions or drought tolerance and so on. Yeah. So you can decide on, and uh, once again, it's uh, like, you know, look at the number of results you get, as I said, it's once again trial and error. And uh, uh, also, you know, if you, uh, uh, one other very helpful one is, if, uh, as I said, if there's, if there's, um, if there's a full text available, it's usually get a higher preference, but not all because that there are many other conditions. Uh, you don't always get that. Uh, but if you really want on the PDFs of uh, these, you can actually give file type uh, colon PDF just to say, I don't, I don't really want anything that doesn't have a PDF. I want the uh, the results which has this topic, uh, these keywords, and the file type is PDF. So. I want X only that, nothing else. So um, by giving that, you can you will only get the results which is which has uh, uh, PDFs available uh, in the results uh, where you can download those things. So which is much more important than getting all the results which you cannot actually get access to. Now, once again, as I keep saying, you can always see these numbers that you get. So it's a trial and error thing um, where you can do many things. So do you, it's very important that you know the tools, the other options where you can change uh, your search uh, parameters. Uh, now, what exactly we are trying to do uh, is um, basically two things. One is the zoom so that you can see that we are changing the number of results that we get. Basically it's the zoom level, right? So that you zoom in so when you put uh, phrases, when you put quotes uh, in words, you're actually reducing the number of results. Um, and uh, when you give very generic terms or a lot of words, when you give without quotes many words, you are actually increasing the range. So if you want to narrow down to a specific area, you will have to put uh, things like, uh, uh, put the, the, the phrases to say, I want these exact phrases or you can exclude certain keywords to say, I want in this area, I want, I don't want anything to do with this part, uh, only this, so that you are actually um, in that one, what you are exactly doing it, not zooming in. So that's the other thing that you will do with a binocular or a, um, uh, or a telescope that you actually uh, span across. Uh, so one is that you zoom, the other one is that you, so what you do is like, you just think about if you, how you, you would use a binocular, what you do is uh, if you want to look at certain things in detail, first of all, you zoom out, you uh, uh, find the exact area that you want to look at, and then you'll zoom in. So if it's not what you have, you will zoom out again uh, and move a span across, find the other area and then zoom in. So this is exactly what you would try to do in Google Scholar as well. Um, that. Um, uh, most of the time, we don't know exactly what you want, or you want actually to look at multiple areas in this thing. So you will give the, so by chain in the word order, 
you can actually uh, span across, like, you know, you can change the direction of your search because the, the first, the, um, uh, first uh, let, uh, words will have more significance. So you're actually uh, moving uh, or spanning your uh, binocular, right? And there by putting brackets uh, and so on, you can zoom in uh, and then zoom out again. And you can put all in title to zoom in a lot more to exactly where it is. And uh, it, by excluding certain words, you actually span into a different area of the forest. So, so this, as I said, this is all a, a trial and error. By look, sometimes when you put all phrases, you put the many phrases, you'll see that you don't have any result at all. So that you have zoomed in too much that you don't have anything. Then you have to zoom out uh, to get uh, little by little. Right. So it's always a trial and error. So that's. It's very important not only to zoom in and out, but to also span across by doing different things. Um, so once you know the tools to, to do these things, you, you can try this out um, so that um, you, you will ensure that you don't miss anything uh, related to the topic that you're working on or you're interested in. Um, okay, um, so any questions so far? Yeah, Dr. Pandaranayaka, there's a question on the chat box. If we write within quotes, rice in the middle, uh, what will it still not consider the stop words? That is no, it, so if you put it in a phrase, it's uh, it'll, it'll not consider as a stop word. So it's like it, that exact phrase will be searched. Uh, can we mention a little about? image searches as well, Dr. Bandarnak. I don't know whether it is out of scope. Maybe suppose I found a flower and uh, I have an image of the flower. I'm just wondering whether there's anything published already uh, on this flower. So can I do an image search? Uh, image search? So it's, um, so in Google Scholar, you don't have, so it's, it has to be Google, uh, normal google search right? uh, so what do you mean by whether it's published like you know it's is there any article related to that yes right so, 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 so if, um do you know what that flower is or that you don't know what that flower is? i have no idea what the flower is uh, that is what my objective immediate objective is to know what this flower is yeah so that the the on the, the stop sharing so one of the things that you can do, so if you have a, let's say, um, let me just find the picture. Dr. Bandarak, if it disturbs the flow, then we can do it later so on. I'm just, uh, I, let, let me just, um, just give you a quick answer to what you're saying. I'm just looking for an image. Um, so usually, uh, the audience can post their questions on the chat box or Padlet. So, okay, let me just share this first. So this is a, a flower that's just, I, I just downloaded and then I opened it in my uh, browser. I don't know what this flower is. 
um, and then I can search the Google for uh, search Google for this. So if I click on right click on this one, I can actually search for that image. Usually, you might be able to find this one. So, uh, so right, similar images come up. Yeah. So I assume that is correct. Um, so. Yeah. So you can do these things as well. Um, it, it doesn't always work, you know. Sometimes you don't get any results as also. You some, sometimes you get from like different forums and all that. For so this is, I think, assume this is quite a, a common one. So that's it's much easier. So if it, it depends on number of, uh, uh, it depends on the amount of data that is there. Um, so I guess you can see there are so many of those images there, so that uh, Google can actually uh, do a. a uh, image comparison and uh, identify that, um, but um, it, it 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 all depends uh, on you know how common that is whether there are other um, other uh, images available of that one which are tagged uh, or identified. Uh, based on that, uh, you will get uh, different uh, uh, results. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Any Thanks other questions? Me. Don't see any questions on the chat box. You might check the Padlet. Uh, yeah, Padlet also, I have the same question. It's fine. Okay, so if you have any questions, just uh, you can post those uh, as well. Um, also, in any other comment, like you no, know, go faster, go slower, and all that, you can actually do that in the Zoom as well. Uh, so you can say that too. Um, Okay, let me start from where I stopped. So um, once again, um, when we look at uh, this um, uh, search, as I said, you know, it's kind of like a zooming effect. I mean, it's like a binocular effect where you're trying to kind of uh, span across, identify your keywords, the importance of the keywords, uh, and uh, and then zoom in exactly to find the exact information or the papers you want. Um, now, um, now we have done this. I mean, for example, in in, in our computer engineering uh, undergraduate course, uh, we have actually even introduced uh, um, like a review paper writing, article writing uh, in the first part of the undergraduate final year research, specifically for this reason. Um, uh, even though you know they they should be quite. Uh, um, um, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, should be better than probably other students with the computer engineering and the, the background. It's, it's not so because this is uh, nothing to do with the computer literacy or information. It's just to understand what is needs to be done. So uh, why we have done this, why I introduced this literature uh, review um, or like review article or survey article is to ensure that they do this um, literature search properly at the beginning of their research uh, so that they are not stumped or not uh, like have not identified all the resources uh, by the time they do research and publish or try to publish or present their results. Um, even, even with that, we still find that, you know, that they uh, sometimes fail to see uh, or identify you know, results that are relevant to that one. I mean, some most sometimes I have said even recent evaluations, I could just by a quick search, I could find something contrary to contradictory to what they're claiming and so on very quickly. So it's very important, as I said, it's, I mean, the, the, the problem is not that either whether you're good in search or not, but it's like, you know, it's, it will affect the, the research that you are doing, because if you don't know what has been done, uh, if you don't know what is available, what is possible, uh, it's going to um, uh, affect uh, the, 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 your research work uh, uh, negatively. So you need to um, ensure that you use all the resources poss possible, all the tools possible to, to what, cast your uh, net wide uh, and far so that you know exactly what's going on before you embark on your research work. Um, so that uh, to ensure that you are doing something uh, useful as well as not being done and so on. Now, in addition to those things, there are other uh, ways to find the information that you are looking for that might be of use is to look at the uh, 
uh, other aspects that are in Google um, Scholar. So, for example, um, for example, uh, I in my my PhD thesis was in a area called mesh networks, and then uh, so this is like this wireless mesh network survey by Professor Akhil. This is like one of the it's a seminal paper, the survey paper that almost everybody uh, signs. So. Uh, if I want to know what's exactly going on in this area um, now, uh, one of the easiest way to, for me to do just rather than just searching um, blindly um, about mesh networking and try to find what it is, I will um, I'll just search for this one, go to the cited by to see who has cited these. And um, which will give you, give me um, the results. And then I sort it by the date so that I will know exactly, okay, this paper, these are the papers that recently worked on mesh networks uh, and published uh, very, very recently. So can we can keep track of um, uh, what is going on right? uh, or what has happened, uh, what is happening now in that particular area or what that generic area, right? Um, so that is uh, another way to, um, um, look at results or even when you get certain results you can actually look at by who has cited it so if you get a very generic result right you know if you get a generic uh, a general paper that is uh, of a wider uh, uh, a broader um, uh, outlook you can look at who has cited it uh, to find articles which are more um, focused or narrow with a narrow focus right so as I said there are many ways to find this information so you need to know uh, how to do that. The other uh, way is to just look at related articles. So if you look at for something, uh, if you click on related articles, it will actually give you um, many other articles related to that particular one based on different criteria. So you can just uh, look at related articles to see. So if you have that's a particular article that you are interested in and which matches your um, interest, uh, uh, you can look at the related articles to see um, um, what is uh, uh, what uh, what is there? Uh, what are the other papers that are relevant to that area? So that you will find something that you are, you have not uh, searched for, but that is more relevant to what you are looking for. Okay. So that is one possibility. The complete other flip side of the cited by is the, uh, if you get a very specific paper, uh, but you want a broader one, best way to do is to go on to the reference sections and see uh, what they have referred to um, in that one, uh, so that you can actually get a broader uh, idea. Okay, now, as when you are doing like, especially when you are conducting research and then you're going on for a long time, uh, you can't really keep track of, uh, like keep searching uh, again and again for the same thing. For example, let's say I do this one, I want to know what's exactly any paper that comes out on mesh network. I want to know, right? So I so I have to keep doing this. Um, it's um, how often to do, when to do. Uh, it's a um, uh, you might forget to do it. So for all that, uh, as you can see, um, there's a um, option for you to create an alert if you have a particular search that is of interest and something you're looking for. Uh, you can actually create an alert, uh, an email alert, uh, so that, you know, then say, for example, you are looking at uh, ensuring academic integrity of online examinations. Um, I, am, I have searched and then, you know, there are the articles there. I've looked at those things. I have downloaded whatever I want. Uh, I have all that, but I want to know, and because it's like, it's, it's um, very new and uh, a topic of interest at the moment, um, there could be a lot of papers coming out. So I just want to create an alert. So I can uh, click on the uh, click alert, uh, create alert um, uh, option uh, icon, and then which will allow me to, you know, give my uh, email address there. Actually, it will go automatically get from my Google profile. Um, and uh, it will, if you click on create alert, it will actually create an alert which will send emails to. Uh, your inbox, um, like this one, uh, something I got very recently, uh, for any, any the, all the, like the topics that, um, uh, that particular specific search uh, that you have created the alert for, 
So anything new that is that matches that search um, uh, that you will get uh, I recommend this um, uh, email alerts from Google so that you can so you don't have to you know, um, uh, keep uh, going back and search uh, keep searching, but it will send you and then you will automatically get uh, updated about the results. Uh, another thing uh, about the, the full text that has been available, um, uh, most of the time, sometimes, you know, when you click, even though if it says, when you say, uh, when you say PDF source, uh, sometimes you don't get the PDF source uh, when you uh, uh, click. Uh, sometimes even if it says PDF here, when you go, you will see that uh, you will have to actually purchase it or you need to have uh, a subscription. Uh, but um, you can, Check out this all. Like sometimes Google is not that smart. It won't. It like he, he, uh, sometimes here when uh, source says PDF, but it is not really uh, freely available. But if you look at all versions that are there, uh, you will see. For example, uh, like when I click here, uh, the one that is here usually will be from the the original journal. Um, uh, so that which will which we you would not have a subscription or access to. But if, when you look at all the versions um you will see sometimes for example yesterday i downloaded the paper that uh first one went to i i triple explore which is we didn't have access and but at the end in the last one it was actually uh was available from the um the authors uh, the university website uh which i could download um so if you if the pdf is not available on the the link at the top you can just look at the the all versions and try to see whether one of other options will provide you with the PDF. Okay. Um, and um, if even then it's not available, there are other possible ways. Uh, like you can go to things other places like ResearchGate, and uh, usually you can request from the author where they will not share publicly, but will send you the uh, the paper in. Uh, in your email um oh actually there's a this is quite controversial actually so i'm just mentioning it though because um, um I'm, I'm not uh, very fond of this uh, publishing uh what other people call a publishing mafia basically that we do the research but uh, companies get uh, money for that so there are other sources such as high hub this is uh, uh, considered illegal uh, or mm, not mm, so legal uh, com compared to what you asked for, but others also championed by research community. So the, they are, most of the papers are available for free. Uh, I'm not recommending it also, but I'm just giving out the information. So whether you want to use it or not, uh, it's a matter up to you. But um, it, um, those type of resources are available as well. Um, or else, of course, um, we can be uh, very legal and uh, ethical and get uh, um, subscription, which uh, I think as a university we should do uh, so that uh, we can get access to uh, most of these uh, articles uh, uh, in the right way. Um, so like, you know, most of the time, like we like most of you who have been um, uh, in foreign countries, in foreign universities, you would have known that when you search for, uh, uh, especially in Google Scholar, you will get these uh, uh, links through your university, which which will link to the sub subscribed version of that one so that it, those things are available. Uh, um, so that, um, uh, which is something that we should also um, try to do. Um, there's a bit more as well. Uh, any question from those? Okay, so there's a question says, does Google Scholar include all the research papers in internet? I mean, even papers we can find on other sources like Science Direct or PubMed. Okay, so I will mention, I will, uh, that's a very good question. I will uh, come to that um, in a little bit about whether everything is there. We don't know, even Google don't know. But um, if you look at, um, I will show you in a few more uh, slides. 
Um, Google Scholar is actually at the top of how many papers it has indexed. But um, now if you look at, so indexing is, uh, so this is as, as um, um, so indexing is something that it's done uh, uh, automatically. They are, uh, what do you call, uh, crawlers or uh, uh, scripts that uh, in Google that will actually uh, go around indexing this thing. So it is done automatically. Um, um, so it it's uh, it uh, so there are there are what you call uh, publicly available ones. So in the normal Google search, uh, it's most of the time it's publicly available as well. Uh, so that you they will search, do this crawl all the time and add new things as you go. But in research articles, while some things are public, other things are um, uh, private, like you know, or subscription based. So you cannot go and search on those uh, articles or updates on all, all, all those articles uh, regularly. Um, so what happens is you know, in, in Google Scholar, uh, if there's a new article, uh, usually it appears very quickly. But if there's an uh, update, so for example, let's say uh, anybody who's worried about like, you know, this is H index and this your citations, number of citations, you will see those things um, actually um, uh, update not that frequently in Google Scholar. Why? Because it's like, the, if it's a basically a subscription based one or, or a, a particular um, journal, they only go and, uh, you know, crawl through that thing to update, uh, not the new ones, but the older ones to update any value. That happens uh, every six to nine months to one year. So, um, so depending on different journals. So it, you will see your, the, your citation numbers go up uh, once in a while, but uh, for different journals at different times. Um, and numbers you will get from ResearchGate might be different from what you get from Google Scholar because they do this indexing at different times because you don't, that even the companies don't allow the Google bots to come and keep uh, you know, going through their uh, repository to update things every other day. Um, so uh, the um, simple answer to the question, um, does Google Scholar include all the research paper in the net? I, I absolutely don't think so. Uh, it's not possible at all. Um, but it contains the most number of uh, articles that is there uh, compared to other sources. Uh, uh, whether the other sources will have things that are not in Google, uh, I don't think anybody knows that, but you should be able to look for your things. Uh, so that's why, you know, it's important, especially like, you know, so it's very important, like say something like PubMed, uh, it's very specific for uh, areas of, uh, um, uh, what do you call, uh, medical field uh, and so on. So uh, might be useful to just search in PubMed to see whether you can find results that are not available in Google. As I said, it's, it's, we don't never know the answer. Uh, I, I, I think that, you know, it should be, uh, there should be so things that are not identified or found by Google that are available probably in PubMed as well. So it's always uh, better to actually look in multiple sources. Why we are interested in Google Scholar um, is that it's actually multidisciplinary. It covers ev almost everything. It has the highest uh, uh, number of uh, uh, indexed papers in the internet. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so um, rest of the things I would actually go a bit faster because uh, we are um, um, just, this is just for your information that these things are also available. So I'm not going to uh, dwell on this uh, as I did uh, for the, the Google search, Google Scholar, Scholar search part. Um, Uh, there's another question actually, how can we avoid duplicate like the same article publishing different platforms? I am not really sure about this question. Uh, what is exactly meant by this? Uh, how can we avoid duplicates like the same article publishing different platforms? Uh, can you give a 
example or something. I'm not really sure. I mean, it could mean two different things. So, um, can you give a sample of what you what you mean by that question? Okay. Uh, so, Iqbal, if you can give an example or clarify that question, it will be easy. I'll come back to that one later. Uh, so there's more, as I said, uh, things like um, uh, Google Books, uh, um, uh, now you can specifically I look for books and you know, uh, there's, um, uh, and you get, you can actually read a lot of books uh, in Google uh, Scholar. Uh, and uh, uh, these are done, uh, Like for example, multiple intelligence in the, the classroom, it's one of the, my favorite book about you know, this uh, teaching and all that. Um, and uh, you can do this uh, and you can actually search for specific phrases in like, you know, books as well, uh, because that Google actually not only uh, scan the text, but they do the optical character recognition of that one. So uh, it's basically, um, uh, you can actually say, search for text in books. So, so when I when I wanted to you know, search for something, what called you know, say linguistic intelligence or this uh, uh, this capacity to use words effectively and so on, so that I can search that part. Right? So you can do this in books.google.com. Right? Um, there were legal issues at the beginning, but now it's not so. Um, so like, so for example, when I search for that one, I actually get exactly where it is in the book. So it's actually in the multiple intelligence in the classroom. You can see the capacity to use was effectively whether orally or in writing. So, so I can actually search for linguistic intelligence and it will give it in the, the book uh, and specifically where it is uh, in the book itself. Now, uh, these books are available in Google by the scholar partner program and the library project. So some may have the full book, some may have limited preview, uh, a snippet or no preview at all, but more, more and more, uh, more books have been added to uh, Google Books. So it's actually a quite good resource and that's it as well. You can all, you can search it in different ways. Okay. That happens most to most of us. Um it's the one of the problems of online meetings. Uh, we have to excuse everybody. We have had all had uh, those things, so no worries at all. Um, now, all these things that we discuss, actually, you know, um, these are all available. So the, on the, the best, the, the, the main idea is that you you need to be aware of that these are possible, these like that you, you should, uh, there are these tools, options available for a literature search. Um, which, you know, you can go to like, you can search for these things. Uh, for example, you can go to Google Guide, which will give you all the things that you can do. Uh, there are many other sites like this, so uh, which will um, uh, give you the techniques, search techniques, tools, and so on to do uh, uh, do the, your search better, right? Uh, so once you know that it is possible, uh, you can actually go and, you know, um, refer to these things, these sites, you know, how to do Google better uh, so that you can identify these different options as to how to do things, things and so on. Okay. Um, to this. Um, there's a question. Uh, so if we are doing systematic Tick review, we need to avoid duplicates so that in case how we can avoid duplicates when searching in different search engines. Okay, so that is um, um, 
uh, that is to do with uh, reference management. So we'll come to that one uh, later. That's uh, the next topic actually. Um, so we will uh, deal with that. Uh, Next. Um, okay, so uh, a question that was asked earlier, um, alternative Google Scholar, of course, there are many. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of those things. Um, but um, if you look at those, this is from uh, the specific uh, uh, Wikipedia page. You can actually go and look for those. Um, uh, so list of academic databases and search engines, uh, uh, list of academic databases and search engines. So when you go, there's a, this uh, particular table there, which gives you, so I have sorted this from size. You can see that they're like, you can sort from name, discipline, access cost and so on. So um, Google Scholar is at the top with the size of the uh, database. Um, and you can also look from like the discipline. Uh, so there are um, like if you specifically want to search in either in medicine or biology uh, or agriculture or arts or different areas, liberal arts and so on. So you can actually um, uh, look at uh, certain um, uh, databases which specifically cater for that area, right? So. Um, so earlier there are you know, things like, you know, web of science, earlier known as uh, uh, web of knowledge uh, used to be one of the sources that people used the most and Scopus, uh, which has now actually come to mostly to Google Scholar because most of the things that you can find here are in Google Scholar as well. Uh, PubMed and PubMed Central, I think uh, a bit different so that you can actually uh, find all this uh, medical literature as well as uh, biomedical and life science literature uh, in those places. Uh, there are other um, uh, sources like, you know, uh, Crossref, um, as well as, you know, uh, something that we are going to look at uh, uh, next, uh, which is Mendeley. Uh, one of the reasons um, that you will see that uh, most people prefer Mendeley for reference management is one of the things is that it's actually as this Mendeley search as well, uh, which actually what is called a crowdsourced um, uh, search engine. So that uh, uh, it, its search engine is actually based on what the users are adding to the li their libraries, uh, not by crawling everywhere. It just look at all the, the references that are added. And then based on that, they so they develop this crowdsourced uh, um, um, uh, search based on that. Okay, um, so that comes to the end of um, literature search. Uh, are there any other questions? Professor Majidit, uh, should yes, we take uh, a little break? Yeah, that is what I wanted to suggest. Before that, there was one question received. Uh, how do you compare general Google with the Google Scholar in terms of searching capacity? Okay. Um, was it in the... It was text to me. Okay. So um, can you repeat that question? Now, how, how do you compare? Question? Yeah. How do you compare Google with the Google Scholar in terms of searching search capacity? Capacity, I don't, I'm not really sure what I meant by capacity. I so think uh, what is meant by the question is the, uh, the how powerful it is. So it's, a, it's like, okay, so, so when you look at Google and Google Scholar and different Google uh, search engines, so, uh, uh, the, the fundamental algorithms and all those are uh, Similar, so that the capacity or the power, the how powerful those are, are uh, is, is the same. same. What 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 uh, differs is the database they are using or the data set they are using. One side, so like Google would search the entire web, whereas Google Scholar will look at these indexed uh, papers. 
Uh, and the other one is, as I mentioned in the, uh, earlier, uh, how you give importance. As I said, in Google, uh, normal search is called page rank. So the pages are given to you based on uh, the relevance of that algorithm called page rank and few more features. So it's based on like um, a, a, site's in, a, 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 a given site's importance or relevance is based on how many others are linking to this page. So it's kind of a very complex thing. So that I'm not going to explain it, but it's the same similar thing in, in when you're Google Scholar, similar in the idea that you look at who has cited most. So the similar idea, but it's more relevant to research papers because you want to find the papers that are being uh, referred by more um, more of other papers. Okay. So uh, similar concept, but uh, different criteria. There are, there's a couple of questions to deliver to chat box. You can see. How significant is abstract publication conference with respect to the paper publication? So that is. Um, um, now, uh, this is nothing to do with the actually, uh, what do you call, uh, finding um, uh, literature and reference management. This is actually um, um, to do with uh, what is considered uh, um, like good publications or not. I mean, so usually I think, I think I think it's not relevant to this one, but just to briefly uh, in like so normally journal publications is considered the deep best or so on which is actually not really true in my area computer science computer engineering electrical engineering and so on our area actually the most significant ones are the conference publications we have like higher impact uh, conferences than journals uh, but it's in general in scientific in research um, world um, journals are considered the the, the top of the uh, um, line and then you have different uh, when we have uh, like different levels going down so anyway since it's out of uh, the, um, today's context I will not uh, comment in further when you see okay so something about uh, Mendeley so we'll come back to that when we are looking at the um, reference management um, yeah, Dr. Dr. Bandar, think, uh, yeah, I think uh, you now doing this, we're uh, talking for three hours, four hours at uh, a stretch is not easy. So I suggest that we take about 10 minutes break. Sure. And uh, then uh, we can refresh ourselves and especially you, then get back by, you know, my time is 10.42. Uh, if you can suggest a time, Dr. Bandana. And I can start, I mean, um, I think actually if you're typing in, you'll have to like, you know, keep changing. You have to find the references. Uh, we see this one in uh, like, you know, most of the time, um, not just in, not just in the reference style. Sometimes you can probably change it much easier, but you see uh, the numbers or the reference citations in the text does not match the bibliography at the end. So all these things are very cumbersome to manage. So you publish, you you submit to one uh, uh, journal or conference, and we, uh, you get rejected. Then you submit to another place which has an entirely different citation style. Now you have to change the entire thing again, and you uh, probably add one part, and you know you add more things, or you change, or you use a paper, but you wrote in a paper in your thesis. And you put those references down the the citation style are different or the uh, like especially if you are using numbers like in IEEE they use numbers so if you use numbers for your citations then um, sometimes this site number doesn't match with the bibliography that you have so all these things are just a utter waste of time uh, uh, when you uh, when you have tools that you can that can do it for you. Um, so, um, so, so basically when it comes to, um, there are references, uh, or literature, um, there are two problems. One is you have how to manage all the documents that you have, all these PDFs you download from everywhere. And then you have to deal with the popular citation styles that, that are, that are there, which are used by, um, uh, 
different types of um, uh, um, journals and conference and so on. So what we are trying to do in uh, reference management tools is to, um, to organize, annotate, and manage the references. Uh, uh, you can, you know, where you can import references from online databases, library catalogs, websites, PDFs, and so on. Uh, where you can create the in-text citations and the bibliographies. And also one of the much more productive one is to share the references with other researchers as I show you later. Um, you can work on your references anytime, anywhere, uh, because you can uh, do this um, uh, in the cloud um, now. So it's a similar to uh, either Google Drive or Dropbox and other things. You don't need to put it in your, just in your desktop where you can lose all that. Um, you don't need to have your desktop or PC to do that. You can access it from anywhere, um, uh, anytime, right? So, so which, which where it will be available in like web and local versions um, so that, um, uh, so that, you know, all the issues that we discussed earlier are, won't be there uh, or there are solutions for those uh, in this reference management tool. So as uh, was Majid mentioned early in the beginning, there are many, um, most of them, most of which are, uh, uh, you need to buy them um, or not, not free, um, other than like uh, Sotero um, and Mendeley. Um, I have picked Mendeley, um, for particular reasons, um, Sotero is also um, a good uh, option, but I also see that uh, a lot, uh, many of uh, the participants or registrants to today's program have, are also using Mendeley. Um, I'm specifically using Mendeley for one important reason that it's like it has a larger um, online uh, repos like uh, space uh, given free, uh, and also it's a uh, the search database so where you can actually find other things and so on. But um, uh, you cannot go wrong with either of that one, but we will focus specifically on uh, Mendeley. If we have not, uh, uh, if you are not using uh, any um, uh, online tool, or if, 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 even if you're using uh, something like, you know, EndNote um, uh, or even BibTeX, uh, like if you, uh, you can uh, use Mendeley even for BibTeX. There, are Mendeley you can use Mendeley to uh, to uh, integrate with BibTeX. Um, and uh, if you're using EndNote uh, from your previous subscription or paid, uh, you can actually probably switch to Mendeley uh, because this is free, and you can actually do much more uh, uh, in Note. Okay, so it's a free reference management software. Um, uh, provided by Elsevier. Uh, Sotero, the, the good thing about it is it's an open source one. So uh, it's never going to be um, owned by anybody. So it's not it's most probably not to be uh, priced anytime, but I not think in Mendeley, it will happen to Mendeley either, uh, but you can never know. But uh, at the moment it is free and I assume that it will be kept free because they are making money in a different way. Um, you have the desktop web, web and mobile versions. Uh, there are plugins for word processors, so you can use a MS Word plugin um, uh, to, um, uh, or in LibreOffice, um, uh, the free version of uh, Office that is uh, there. Um, and, um, and then also much more importantly, you can create groups and share your personal libraries with others, which uh, is very, very uh, useful uh, work in collaborative work uh, and not to do this like to do the same uh, again and again for each individual who's working on the same area right and then use the uh, citation uh, popular citation formats uh, I assume that you know most of you are using manually anyway others I think the instructions were said I assume that you have downloaded and uh, installed uh, uh, Mendeley desktop um, so you can try those these things out uh, in your uh, Mendeley desktop as we go along, or else you can take notes and then uh, try those things out later.
So uh, as I said, uh, there are two versions of that one for those who have not seen or used. Uh, there's the vendor desktop, which you can, uh, which we will use uh, uh, for most of the work, um, and then uh, uh, which has the the more option, more than, which has more options. And there's also Mendeley web, so you can uh, get all the what is there in the web as well. Um, okay, so what can we do with Mendeley? So I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to just show it uh, in the slides. I'm going to just uh, go and uh, um, start working with uh, Mendeley uh, desktop uh, so that uh, can actually do these things as we go. Okay, um, so this. Okay, uh, so um, when you, when you um, uh, get the Mendeley desktop, um, you have uh, um, you have uh, different parts of uh, in the um, Mendeley desktop. You have the menu there, and then the buttons, um, and then. Um, uh, you have the, the folders menu here, folders and groups. We will talk about that uh, later. Uh, and then the, that's the, the filter uh, window. Once again, we will look at it later. Uh, and you have the document uh, main uh, document window as well as the um, information windows here. So, uh, um, so let's look at, uh, without really looking at what all these things mean, uh, let's look at what you can do with it. So first first, first thing, uh, first, uh, what you have to do is, um, uh, now once you install this one, um, once you start, you can add the document. So to add the document, there are many ways. You can add the, uh, a, a complete folder uh, to your um, repository. So if you have a PDF downloaded, uh, in your uh, uh, hard drive, you can uh, add those papers uh, directly um, uh, by adding a folder. So let me have uh, downloaded a few papers just for demonstration. Okay, so this um, here called uh, a directory called Smart Agriculture that uh, I've. Uh, I've downloaded a few papers, on, um, so I, I can add those things uh, and then uh, can see those things will be added to your, um, uh, your library. And uh, those are the, what is highlighted here in uh, blue, uh, those papers. Uh, I will show you a few more ways to add uh, before moving on to what to do with the new ones. Uh, so you can add, individual files itself um, um, where you can actually um, like for example you can um, just pick one paper as you can see you know those are numbers and all that uh, I don't even know what this what is there but you can add um, and it gets added there uh, you can also drag and drop so I can uh, 
if I go here, I can just drag and drop here and then it will just um, So that they get added as well. So you can drag and drop, you can add a file, you can add a folder. Um, um, and then um, you can also do watch folder. So for example, let's say that um, I, uh, I will add, uh, I will download and add uh, papers to my uh, smart agriculture uh, direct so I can say watch this uh, uh, drive uh, so that um, uh, whenever I download a paper that it will automatically uh, get added here so that you can do uh, it multiple ways and uh, now another way to add the uh, thing uh, now this is uh, basically if you have um, uh, if you have um, what do you call um, uh, if you're not using Mendeley or, and, uh, uh, and you have, uh, let's say your PDFs in your hard drive, then if you need, when, if you know, when you want to add, uh, you'll have to uh, use it that way. Or if you're using something like uh, uh, text, or if you're using uh, uh, EndNote or any other uh, software, and you want to switch to uh, Mendeley, uh, you can actually import those things. So for those, on those software, so like if it's a bib text, uh, there'll be a dot bib file, uh, which you use with the LaTeX, uh, so that you can actually just identify that uh, file and uh, just uh, uh, get all the, the, the references here. Or you can, um, like from M0, you can actually ex export it as an XML file, all the references and import it here. Also, you can do it with uh, RIS files or RIS files or Zotero library. So this can be done both ways from Mendeley to Zotero from Zotero to um, Mendeley. So you can, so if you have these things in any other place, uh, you can actually export it from there. Big text you can directly get, or you can export it from there and import it here. Uh, now, one of the questions I got last time is that uh, what to do if you are not using any of these things, you are just typing in. So I, I saw that there, there are many who are uh, still uh, typing this in or uh, copy paste uh, these things. Uh, so there's a way to actually convert your uh, typed in ones. I will uh, show you that as well. Uh, once again, uh, if you have any questions, please post those uh, in the public or even um, now. Um, I will I will give you this one. So um, so if you have it in text, uh, there are a couple of sites that you can use. Uh, this is actually very very simple one. You can actually change. You can turn your text into. Um, uh, bib text uh, ver version. Um, uh, so if you are, well, so let me show you how it is done. Um, so I have few references in one of these um, um, text files. Uh, let me just grab those. Um, uh, I can. Um, I assume you can see the browser uh, window I'm using. Uh, it says uh, separate multiple references two lines. Uh, actually, you should not have this. Uh, uh, so this is from IEEE format. So uh, any of these things that you have, you should like, you know, they are references they should not have in this, uh, this simple version. So you'll have to remove those things. But in the other tool I'm showing, it's actually much more comprehensive and you don't have to worry about it. I'll show you the simple one. Uh, so you can actually make a beep text record uh, from this. Uh, you can actually copy paste this to a, a text editor and save it as a .bip file and import. So I'll give you this one. If you are comfortable in using this one just to create a text file. Uh, okay. 
Yes, um, Balakrishnan, I will do that. Uh, there's a question. I will come to that one later. First, we are looking at adding the, uh, the references. Uh, we'll come to organization and how to uh, use that um, next. Uh, so you can basically like, you know, copy these things, uh, open up uh, uh, something like a notepad or any other text editor, uh, save it as a .bib file, um, and then import it uh, uh, using Zotero. Or um, so let me give this. Uh, uh, so this is a simple version. If you are comfortable, you can use that. Or there's this um, uh, site called um, uh, sgproeewww.com. Um, now here it's actually much easier, but it takes time. Now I actually have a, a let me show you. Um, I have this uh, word document where um, uh, there are references uh, in different, uh, like you know, I copied from uh, another paper, just the references, which is in IEEE format. I can actually. Uh, just uh, just copy those things, and uh, in this website you'll have to actually create a um, you'll have to create a account, um, and then um, you can actually come here. Um, uh, you can act. You can actually there's an option to add uh, your collection. This is also a reference management, thing. And so you can import from the clipboard. So you can just go here, uh, just uh, copy copy from that original source, paste it here. Uh, so it, you can see that it is saved. So you can click on import now, uh, which will, it will take a bit of time. It will actually, it will search the, uh, the, the references and the information and all that. You can see that information is here already. Like, so these are the some papers that are there. I did it last night. Um, so these things are the ones I got from there and then they have searched and put things here. Uh, now what you can do after this is uh, done is that you can create your library by using the text and putting it to your clipboard and inputting. Some might not work because they can't find the sources, but most of this will work. If you have uh, typed in this properly, uh, as like, you know, those uh, different uh, aspects are there like you have typed in in properly with the correct uh, order as you know like you know you have the authors and the uh, uh, article name and the, uh, the publication or the conference and the uh, volumes the dates the pages and so on if you have it in the proper format this will identify and uh, uh, import those and then you can export these either in uh, ris format or bib text format. So if I export it, I can save it as a .bib file. Okay. So let's say I, in the documents, I uh, save it as uh, my references bib. Uh, and then I can go to uh, uh, my uh, Mendeley desktop and I can import that, uh, the bib file. So it's in uh, my documents, my references bit. As you can see it got added. So this is the paper that got added. There's, there should be two more. Yes. So those papers got added. Uh, the PDFs are not there because PDFs are not here anyway. So you'll have to find those PDFs if you're necessary. Uh, but uh, the reference get added here so that you can use it for your citations, right? Um, Otherwise, okay. And other way, uh, which you should not be using for any reason, uh, another way is that you can actually add an entry manually. So if you have a text sources, you can actually keep, you add, type this and add, but you can see it's a cumbersome thing. If you have many, especially if it's only few, of course you can do that. But if you have uh, many, it might be uh, prudent to just to use uh, those uh, text uh, import. Uh, rather than just typing in. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, you can uh, in the, uh, 
This one you can see tools. That's the install web importer. I have already installed um, web importer in my Chrome one. You can have it in Firefox as well. Um, now, when you go here, you will see that um, uh, in your browser, you can see that um, uh, I have the Mendeley web importer installed. So if I go to um, color at Google, like, uh, let me see. So I can search for, let's see. Now, if you search like this one and you do a, um, so you can sign in and then it will show you, uh, it will, extract the information in the search page uh, and it will show you uh, the references uh, here. Um, you can pick what you want. Uh, it, if it's PDF there, it will uh, download the PDF automatically. Um, okay. So I pick uh, a few. And I can say add to my library and it will automatically add these files um, to my library, uh, which is in the web. So you can see those are already here in the recently added, uh, the, all the references are here, recently added ones are here uh, in your uh, web interface. Um, uh, so like you know depending on the search so like if you go to a different page uh, these things uh, will change it will get the extract the information and then you can add it you can add the pdfs as well um and so it's very easy now once you once you have put all your existing ones the pdfs and the text and all that afterwards uh, you 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 really never have to kind of download and add it like what i showed earlier you can actually directly do it from um your browser uh, when you search you can just directly add it to Mendeley and then you you have it there so um, and then it will automatically download to whatever folder that you you uh, have identified to put it there right so and uh, also if you go to a specific um, uh, page um, uh, if you go to specific page you can actually add that like you know if you if you have things and you go to a specific page you can uh, uh, get this um, particular paper like if you if you open a paper because sometimes you don't want to just download it from the google scholar you open the page look at the abstract and see okay this is good uh, i want this one so um, you can just uh, click on this one and add it um, uh, so that uh, that particular one only you can only select one and it will also show the all the references so that you can also see anything in, of interest that is there as i said so the references will go to more generic ones as i said in the literature search earlier so if you think something is much more like important by looking at this like you are looking at the text and you see ah this there is identifying this uh, this thing and this is the these are the references okay let me find those references and just link it and then automatically download them as well so you can easily add a lot of material to your um, library very quickly uh, and then uh, deal organize them which will we will look at later right? um, okay uh, any question on adding material to your library any questions to things on things that we have done so far. Uh, excuse me, sir, I'm Chantika here. Sorry, I can't hear. Uh, I'm Chantika here. So I mean, yeah. I'm trying to add the, the well, I mean, web import one, Mendeley one. Mm -hmm. There, I can't uh, sign into the account, my Mendeley account. There, it's going to the elsewhere account where I don't have a such account here. I can't 
go to my Mandalay account. It's going to something else. Because of something else, what I mean, when you click on the web importer, yeah, it uh, it says uh, like um, like when you are using this, let's say. So you, when you click on this, let's say like this particular tab, like this particular icon in your browser. Yes. So then they're asking to sign in. Yeah, they are asking to sign in. So it's open again in the Microsoft Edge one. It's automatically open there. Oh, okay. So, it's so I can't plug into the Google I Chrome. I from Edge. So are you using Edge for the this as or Chrome? Chrome, I'm using. Sorry? I'm using Chrome. Probably you have set your, um, I, but uh, maybe it's because I have not faced it because I don't have it as my default browser. I am assuming uh, it might be because uh, when you say, uh, when you like your default browser might be, uh, default browser might be Edge. And because of that, it's directly when you click log on, it's to go into Edge. Uh, that's the only reason I can think of because I have not seen that one. But uh, that might be because I'm I don't use Edge as my default browser. I mean, Chrome is my default browser, so it's basically to go to that one. Um, I am thinking that might be the reason. I can check with uh, Firefox. That might be. Can you check like you know? Um, Yes, Ali. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Um, so, okay. do we have uh, to get the uh, web importer separately? Yes, so like I think I use so, so that if you go and go to here, install web importer is here. So depending on your default browser, it will actually go to that browser. So when I click this one, it actually opened that site. If you could see earlier, it opened that page in Chrome. So if I click on this one, it actually goes to uh, Chrome uh, and you will, you will, because of my default browser is Chrome, it actually goes there. And uh, you can see this one, it's actually identify what this one is, what browser is, then it automatically give me the WMP import for Chrome. So I actually copied this one because I already have it here, but I went to Firefox and I, um, um, uh, in my Firefox window, um, when I open the same one, it's actually, um, um, allow you uh, ask to in, inst install the fire web importer for Firefox. So once you click on that one, it will actually add on add the Firefox add on. Uh, it will ask. Uh, right, so now you can see in Firefox also, I have it here. Now when I try to log in, it's fine. So I'm not getting the same problem. Uh, yeah, as Dr. Bandarnayak pointed out correctly, uh, it will if you go to Mendeley and do it, it will install only to the uh, default browser. If you are using the uh, Edge as a default browser, it will be installed there. But in addition, you are using other browsers, they will not be affected. So you have to directly go to Firefox or Chrome, then try to download, then it should work, isn't it, Dr. Banda? Yes, but uh, that, that edge issue, I don't know what some because- I think uh, she has got it resolved. She text okay. here, yes. Fine, um, so yeah, so you can do it that way as well. Um, go back to Wendley desktop, okay. So uh, so basically this is all about adding. Um, um, and then 
Now, once you have added, um, the most important thing, first thing is to ensure that, uh, uh, that you have the sources properly so that you can use them later. So for example, um, I'll show you here. Now is there, um, I don't know how visible this is because it's too, it's too small because of my resolution. Um, so you have all documents here and there are, there's one called needs review. So what this need review is that, you know, it doesn't have all the information that should be available to for a citation. So if I go to this page, it says, uh, the details need reviewing. You can mark them as correct or search the mentally catalog. Um, so if you look at this one, um, actually most of the information is there, it seems. Um, I don't know why it's saying, so I can say, okay, details are correct. Uh, this one, let me find another one. So for example, this one, um, so this one, as you can see, the journal name is not there, the volume, the issue, the pages, um, and the author keywords, and all those things, uh, document uh, uh, index number, and all those things are, uh, identifier, uh, document object identifier DOI is not available. So all these things uh, are not available. So like when you fill up your thing, now how does this happen? It's like, say for example, if you have it in references and like, you know, done, like ex export from somewhere else and put it here, you'll have all the information. But when you're doing it from PDFs, what happens is that this information is extracted from the PDF so most of the new PDFs um, actually will have this information, right? So this is called metadata. Like if you go into properties of a file, you will see this information in there. So it's called metadata. If it's available in metadata, there's, there's no issues. So all the new uh, papers, PDFs, if you get it directly from the, the site, um, you will actually have the, all this information which will populate these uh, things quickly, I mean, without any errors. Uh, whereas if you use something uh, older, um, uh, sometimes you don't like, so for example, if not, if this is not available in metadata, what it will do is it will try to scan, like do the OCR kill optical character recognitions, actually scan the paper the te for the text. It knows like at the top, the title is at the top and then the authors and all that. So it will try to extract that information by optical character recognition. It's not as good as metadata. So you might have errors. So that, that's, it comes to review. Uh, if it's actually like a scanned version, which is without optical character recognition, you might not have uh, uh, any information at all. Uh, so you now the thing is, if one, when you add these things, you will have to go and review those things add the information because once you have like hundreds of things, it's very cumbersome to go and add this information one by one. So it's much better whenever you add new papers just to go and you know review uh, the papers that are available. And then uh, what is whatever that is missing, uh, add those things and you know, correct them and uh, collect them as, uh, you know, as correct. So that um, uh, you will have a, a resource which is full of all the required information. Is there different settings in Mendeley desktop and Mendeley reference manager? The Mendeley's reference manager in the online versions. Uh, okay, so once you have added all your resources and uh, completed the, this one, it's the next most important thing is the, um, um, what do you call, uh, organization of this one. Right. So how to organize the information. So there are multiple ways for you to organize. So the, the, the traditional method or the, the uh, more, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, more, uh, the, the 
the method that is more uh, familiar to everybody is what is called folders. So in your library, you can actually call folders. Now, unlike uh, Windows or operating system folders that you have in uh, like Windows or Linux or wherever, these folders are just labels. So like, say so for example, let's say I have this, uh, I have this um, folder called uh, mesh network. Uh, let me just put it in. So I have this uh, uh, mesh network. So all these papers, now even if I delete this uh, folder, the paper, nothing happened to the papers because those are not inside this one. It is like I have created, I have searched for all the documents using mesh network and um, all those papers I have put into folder. Let me uh, show that to you. So what I'm going to do is actually inside this mesh network, I can in these folders, you can create subfolders and their subfolders as well. So I'm, what I'm going to do is inside mesh network, I am going to create a subfolder. So that subfolder will be uh, looking at the channel assignment in, in what is called this mesh network area. So in like in the mesh network area, I want to find, so that as, as you can see, um, uh, there are 47 documents in this mesh network uh, folder. Uh, and in, inside that, I am going to search for channel assignment. So you, uh, there are, there are 19 documents so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually put get all these documents i'm going to kind of drag and drop them into this channel assignment okay so if you go to channel assignment So if I go to channel assignment, I can see that there are the 19 documents are there. It is in that subfolder, right? So it is in this subfolder. But if you go to mesh network, you can see that uh, all the 47 uh, papers are there. So it doesn't matter. So if even if I delete this one, so you can see there's 19 papers. Um, Um, if I, even if I delete this subfolder, the papers are there, the, all the 47 papers are there and nothing happens to those. So these folders are basically, uh, it's just for organization, uh, so that you can actually have a logical order as you used to in the computer, uh, where you will organize this, right? So it's, uh, it's easier for you to have an organization. But um, now, um, uh, basically when you think about this organization, if you think about your, how uh, these folders are usually uh, um, arranged in your computer and how easy for you to find information of uh, these documents later, it all depends on how you manage these things, how you organize these things and all that. But uh, I even from, uh, I have faced so many difficulties sometimes finding information. And especially if you work in a group, um, different people have different uh, organized, like ways of organizing things. So it's very hard to uh, like, you know, uh, have a common way of doing it. Um, but uh, one of the good things about it is that you can actually add the same paper into multiple folders or multiple subfolders and so on. So you can do it differently, but that's, uh, it's the same thing as um, um, if you, if you look at, if you think back, uh, especially if, uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, work in the pre Gmail and on webmail era, uh, you had this outlook and other mail, where you will have organized your mails in uh, different folders and so on. But with, with Gmail, now you can just basically search for it. Uh, uh, you, don't, you can just uh, search with the, um, the different keywords or you can put labels and search, uh, which makes it easier for you to actually, I mean, you can put multiple labels and so on for a given, um, uh, 
for a given uh, mail so that you can easily uh, find information. Because the thing is, uh, when you put in folders, most of the time the problem is that there will be things that will actually belong to multiple uh, subject areas or folders and so on. So where to put those things? So one of the things that you can do is actually here, you can put it into multiple folders because it, it, is not du it doesn't duplicate. But to do that, the, the, uh, the better option in this one is that it allows you um, uh, to um, uh, put your own tag. So let me show you. Um, So if when you go to a paper, um, like if you click on each paper, you can see that there's place that you can actually, so there's uh, all the other information, author keywords and so on. There's also place uh, that we can actually give text that you can put your own text where you can put tag and um, uh, a tag and you know semicolon and multiple tags in that way. Um, uh, so that you can actually is in, like you can uh, put different tags to say this belongs to this particular thing. So it's actually for me, it's in IoT or Internet of Things as well as security because I work on both areas. So I don't have to create like a sick IoT and a security and a security and IoT in my folders. I put all my tags here. Uh, so uh, when I want uh, security related ones, this paper will pop up. Uh, when it uh, when I want Internet of Things or IoT, this paper will come there. So a better way to find things will be uh, you can't say better but that uh, each person's uh, mindset works differently. So you have to find that works best for you, depending on your uh, preference. Uh, but uh, uh, these both these options are available. So for example, like if you go to all your documents, you can actually hear it's notionally have it um, uh, like you in the in the filter table, the filter window, you can have the filters by given ones like filter by author. So you can find um, like uh, papers that is by a specific uh, author and so on. Um, or author keywords, so what they have given. So like um, agriculture, or, And different different keywords that the authors have given. So from that you can find um, you can look at the publication to find things from you know um, computer networks or BMC genomics and so on. Uh, or you can actually use your own text. So that is the that is one of the ways that you can actually find. So let's say for example, I want to find things that I have tagged as IoT. So these are the papers that I have tagged as IoT. So and then security uh, will also have the same papers might or will be in security on other areas as well. So you can put your tags uh, to find um, papers in uh, like, you know, will, will belong to multiple areas, multiple criteria. So especially true with like, you know, if you look at the even the author keywords, they will belong to multiple areas. So it's very hard to actually come up with the folder structure, but you can actually use the your tags um, uh, to identify these uh, papers in different areas. Now, when you use these tags, one of the things is that let's say, now when, if you use your all documents and use your tag, uh, it, it will be all documents. But if you do it in each folder, it will be just belonging to that particular thing also. So you can use this in combination to actually find the relevant uh, papers very quickly in that one. So if you actually put a bit effort to actually think about your format you want and the tags that you would put, uh, finding the, the papers and the information you need will be very, very quick. Any question on those? Just to get a clarification on behalf of the participants, uh, Dr. Bandar Naik. So whatever you do, whether you tag or not, or whether you create 
multiple tags, the master list will remain the yes. same, isn't it? So whatever you do, it, the, other, the information is there. It's like, you know, your, your papers are going to be there. So your tags is just for you to find. So that is not going to go into the references yes. or anything. So it's just for you to find the information. Um, uh, similarly, like, so it's, it's basically uh, to, to organize your data and to find the data efficiently because like if you like earlier like if you have it in your windows folders you need to go through search through everything to f find where it is but if you put your tag okay i want in this area in this particular thing is you can easily find it very quickly so that's the that's the objective of uh, using uh, the tags uh, so that you can put your own tags to identify uh, what <clears throat> uh, based on what you are looking for Um, so that is uh, the organizing uh, uh, the documents. Um, and then uh, comes the other part where uh, when you look at uh, uh, the papers that you have, let's say for example, um, you have this PDF um, which is downloaded and it is there. Now, what you can do in this uh, papers is that you can actually open this in a, uh, uh, um, uh, it will open in a different tab. Right? Uh, uh, and then in each paper, when you are reading, right, uh, you can actually highlight uh, areas um, depending on, uh, okay, say, climate smart agriculture. Uh, and actually, you can actually put a note here. You can uh, uh, and put a note, or you can actually use different colors for different things. Uh, let's say I want this one is for blue for a certain reason. You can have your own colors uh, codes for different parts. Uh, say motivation, one thing, or explanation, one other part, thing, or I mean different color codes based on what you want. Um, and then you can actually um add a note so so i so i said i i'm putting a note to say have the explanation of this one um so that you can see it in your notes so you can add uh, similarly in different places you know like you can highlight the text um, uh, you can um, put a different color and uh, you can add another note. Um, so there are different notes. So these are called actually private annotations, as you can see. Uh, so whenever like you share these documents and so on, um, even uh, you will, uh, even in search, these things will not pop up. It's actually when you open, you will see these things. So if you want this, uh, whatever that tax, let's say, let's say I want this paper to be used um, uh, for uh, climate smart agriculture for what's like, you know, uh, it's like a motivation or a uh, explanation for this area. So uh, in general notes, I can say uh, motivation, uh, climate uh, smart, it's of course it'll be in the title as well. Um, and uh, explanation. So it actually is like, I can use this in those places um, um, for specific things. So, I mean, it depends on you know, what, what you want to search for and so on, but you can put general notes, which, which are searchable. And also when you share those things will be shared as well. Now, just to give you an example. So whatever you put in just general notes, when you go to library, the, you're looking at uh, the entire library, and then you say, I want to have the motivation. You will see, so this, I have put this in many places. So in the note, so these are motivation, these are in the text, but you can see in the first two, it is in the note. So uh, this paper, uh, you can see, I have my notes. Um, it's a motivation for a greenhouse. Um, uh, so that I, I know when I look at, I when I search in the notes, I can see it. Um, and, uh, uh, so it's very easy, like say, for example, when you are reading paper, you uh, put your general notes to say, okay, this is um, uh, this is for this particular area. I want this use as the motivation. This is the explanation for this particular concept. Uh, this is, uh, you know, 
uh, reference for this particular concept. So when you search, you will so see that in the notes, you have identified this one and then it's very easy. So whenever you read, you highlight things, put it in your text and then in the top, uh, in the general notes, you identify late, like later when you are just skimming through, um, this, is, this is where I can use this reference. So those kind of things. So when you're searching, you will find that information so that you can easily use it. You don't have to go to the entire text once again. So read once, do it uh, properly, highlight, put notes, put the important factors into general notes so that you can search it and find whenever needed, right? So this search, you can actually do it in um, like um, uh, in, inside the directories. So then it will only find information that is inside those directories only, okay? Um, so specific subject area, you find the motivation, you'll find only papers that are available there. Okay, so so that's uh, to um, use in the inbuilt uh, PDF reader and use the like, you know, highlighting and uh, notes uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to ensure that you only read the information. So once you built, you populate it. So you do it only once. And then when you read the paper and identify important things, you put the notes so that you don't have to reread and go through the papers to find, trying to find different information uh, whenever that you need. You do it once, do it properly, and that will be the like the, the only time that you need to go through that paper. Um, and unless that you want to, like next time when you want to cite, use it as a reference, then you might go and read it again, but you don't have to search through all the text to find what should I use here and there. Okay, any question on those? Okay, so there was a problem about the duplicates. There's actually, a, there's a, you can check for duplicates here and it'll show you like if there's two, like, you know, whether these two different things are the same, right? Um, so, this is not actually so, but you can check for duplicates if you get it from multiple sources. And if you su su suspect duplicates are there, you can actually go and check for duplicates. Um, and one of the uh, really, really good ones uh, on this is actually this um, related work. So, what do you call? Uh, Uh, there's a question, are there any maximum limit of papers to add to mentally desktop? Uh, no, uh, but uh, the problem is like, okay, I'll show you. Uh, so the, the issue is that, uh, uh, so I will come to that one. Uh, so your Mendeley web and uh, Mendeley desktop are linked. Uh, Zotero, you can decide on what to, like whether to keep it here or not. Uh, here uh, in this, um, in, uh, Mendeley, you have this sync option. So when you use the sync option, what happens is it will check the uh, the web one and it will retrieve. So you can remember I added some from the uh, uh, web importer. Um, so those things have been downloaded now. Uh, and also if you had just added into your um, uh, repository in the desktop, those things will be up, updated into the, uh, the web version. Unless you do this thing, it will not happen. So you can actually keep it apart, but uh, uh, then there's no point of using. The problem is, of course, if you exceed the 2 GB limit in Mendeley, uh, you won't be able to add any more, uh, where you will either have to remove some, as you do in your any other like Dropbox or G Drive or whatever. Uh, you'll have to remove some uh, to get the space or you'll need to buy. Uh, so I think uh, uh, there are multiple stages. Like if you want to buy 5 GB, it's about 50, $20 uh, and so on. So it's like there are different uh, tiers that you can go for, but you'll have to pay extra. So you can stay within the 2 GB if you manage, but if you want to go more, you'll have to actually pay and uh, keep the space online. Um, So this, uh, the other thing is this uh, related work so that uh, you can pick any paper. Um, 
and then you can go for related ones. It will search for, uh, uh, okay, it didn't find anything, but the, if you uh, go to, um, Mendeley, So usually what happens is, okay, they have changed a little bit here. Um, so usually what happens is that uh, I, I can show you uh, in email also uh, that I get a uh, uh, lot of uh, emails, uh, like for all the, email, all the um, uh, papers that you have, um, Mandalay Suggest actually sends you um, um, uh, this uh, reference, these things that are closer to, um, uh, or similar to what you have done. So if I search for mentally, it should say, so it will, it will, it will keep sending me things which are uh, closer to um, uh, the things that I have in my library. So it will make a, a suggestions as to, okay, this is, there are these papers uh, uh, based on your Mendeley library. So this is because it's a crowdsourced one when people keep adding, uh, depending on your keyword uh, comparisons, they will send you uh, uh, suggestions as to, okay, there are similar papers in the area uh, that you can look at, right? Um, so, uh, which is actually quite good because this is similar to, uh, you know, Google Scholar Alerts. Uh, this actually give you a glimpse of uh, new things people are looking at, uh, are interested in. So you can actually go and look at those and add to your library. Um, okay, um, so the, the final thing that is uh, uh, left is actually uh, how to manage the citations. Um, um, so let's me just take a document. Okay. Um, so um, Uh, so um, I hope you can see my word file. So I'm, I'm just using the reference list I have here. So, I mean, you can add, like, let's say, let's imagine this is a, another token. Let me just try to see. So let's say I have a text file like this one, which I want to add um, uh, in my citations. Um, so um, in, in um, Mendeley desktop, uh, earlier I showed that you can actually install um, MS Word plugin. Um, if you go to that one, you can see in the tools there's uh, MS Word plugin, so I've already installed. Once you installed um, uh, that one, um, you can actually go to the, um, go to, let's say, Word file. Uh, you can uh, go to uh, references where you will see this Mendeley option there. So I can um, 
insert a citation by searching it, or you can I can just uh, I can search it by author title, or say let's for example I'll uh, yeah. So let's say I use this one. I can. Uh, so let's say I, I'll just use multiple uh, options, uh, and I can just. Click uh, edit there, or I can um, uh, just I can uh, go to here. I can just go to Mendeley and just uh, pick. Uh, let's say I just uh, pick from here, um, and then just say uh, site. It will automatically. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't show you. Um, so I can uh, go to one place in the document I add here, and I can go to Mendeley where it will actually jump to the Mendeley window. Just uh, I forgot to do it, show it earlier. So you can go to the Mendeley, then it's actually it shows like it changes. The and we can see there's our different buttons there. So I can go and pick. Uh, uh, Different paper here, and I can click on the site button, which will automatically add that to the document in um, in Word, as you can see here. So, so you can keep adding in uh, like this, uh, in like you know, um, keep adding different things. Um, So you can add multiple ones and all that. So, so you can see that at the moment we are using uh, this American Physical Agile Association seventh edition uh, thing. And once you are done with all that, you can actually go to the end. Um, you can uh, have the references sections, and uh, in the references you can insert the bibliography, and you can see that the papers, the 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 references are already there. So you don't worry anything. You don't have to type in anything. It's already there. And if you want to change the format. Let's say I want to change it to IEEE format. I just click on this one and it will automatically change. And if you go to the, uh, in your um, article, uh, these things are already changed to the references that are given there, right? All whatever. So, uh, so if you once again, change it to something else, uh, let's say Chicago menu is this style. So it changes to that format once again, and you will see your your bibliography is so okay. Okay, so it's earlier one actually just showing the nature one, I think. Yeah, so it's it was showing the nature one. So you can change it to different uh, formats so that it will actually, you don't have to do anything. It just, uh, depending on the journal conference you are saying, you have to just pick the, the format that it is uh, using and you can just, it's just a click uh, way just to change uh, how, it is uh, the bibliography as well as the citation is done. Um, so I think uh, that brings us to the end of uh, um, what we can do um, with Mendeley. Um, So we have gone a bit beyond the time. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so any more questions? Anybody has uh, an issue installing the plugin to Word? Uh, I think Dr. Bandana, if you could 
show them for the benefit of the audience. Which one is? Uh, I the, missed uh, the word plugin. plugin. Yeah. So actually, I have this already installed, so that's the problem. Um, So if you uh, go to install with plugin, it just uh, should be, that's usually how it is. So I had the uninstall, there was nothing. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. As long as they know the steps, then that's fine. Um, so if you open a word, uh, you should see it uh, again in that one. Um, I think alternatively, they can look for the plugin on Google and install there as well. Am I uh, for the for the for Word. Word. Mm -hmm. So it's usually it's much easier doing it from through the desktop because it just uh, because it's already there. I just have to install because I, without without the desktop, you can actually use. So I mean, there are other ways to use. Like for example, um, now this is just like Word is one. Uh, of course, be like LibreOffice again, like Word. Uh, with uh, LaTeX, you can actually use this. Now, what we do with uh, our students mostly is actually we are doing entire thing online. Okay. Um, uh, so, like we are actually using uh, this uh, LaTeX uh, way. Actually, you know, using LaTeX is much easier than using mm -hmm. Word if uh, your, your final submission is uh, in PDF. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like you, 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 it's all in like You can you can create with existing one. So we are caught using like this online free one called Overleaves where you can actually like create a new project based on um, uh, based on a, in a template. Um, so academic journal, I can go and pick what journal it is. It's all the formats are there. Like you can look at, you know, Elsevier, Nature, all these things are there. So I can use whatever format and then pick that uh, format to create a new paper. And actually when you do that, you can actually link the Mendeley one to this paper as well. Um, so we do this on, entirely online. You can actually don't use the desktop version at all and have the entire thing online. I can go and add my uh, uh, Mendeley source here um, so that uh, say it shows me, I, I can really delete a link it to Mendeley. So these things are available. I'm just showing it to very quickly so that uh, you can actually do it in many places, not just Word. Uh, you can actually do it in LaTeX uh, and even LaTeX, you can do it easily uh, uh, online. Um, uh, yeah, so. A, a couple of more questions came to chat. Um, my question is still very When we use Mandalay, we can utilize from cloud, but how we can try to get automatic BPL list, which are not in cloud, but staying in cloud. So. Okay, so. So unpublished statistical report. So that, so if you want to add any other resource that is not in your, uh, in your, in your Mendeley, uh, uh, in your Mendeley desktop, you can actually, um, uh, uh, you can actually go and manually add it. Right. So let's say that you want to have an unpublished statistical report. You will have a way to reference that. Like you need to have a reference. You need to reference that one, right? So it's not published, but you can stay this statistical report or somewhere. So you'll have to go and in and in enter that uh, uh, manually. Right? You can pick um, uh, what type. Okay, it's a say it's a report, right? So you give it there and whatever it is, uh, you can add it as a report uh, or a generic or so whatever type of uh, um, uh, so a reference you are adding. And then um, uh, to that one, like even, even newspaper article, you can add. Uh, and then you will have it in your library. So then you can add it to your uh, uh, reference. 
Does that answer your question? Yeah, so this is same same thing. Um, you can again, uh, I mean, there are two ways to actually add, add a, a web page. Uh, one thing is you can actually like, uh, so that is that it is actually in Sotero that is possible directly to add uh, web link. Here it's you'll have to, um, uh, you can either create a web PDF page, PDF page or print as PDF from a web page and add it, or you can add the entry manually. Um, you can add the web page here. You can add the publish and the URL, right? Uh, so you can add a web page. And then, so as I said, so we were mostly looking at the research articles, uh, papers available online as PDFs, but other sources you can actually add manual. Like, you know, other things, reports, theses, working paper, web page and all that. You can actually add them manually uh, and then Later, you can um, use that uh, uh, in in reference. See. Uh, any more questions? I also a question from Balakrishnan Arulasiri, just wondering. And then it will show. Uh, so it's nicely, you can say it's, it is, it is, uh, it is correct. And then, um, uh, then it will take it as it is. If, if like, if you, if it's like, like, if you put it as a journal article and if you miss things, I, so you have to identify what type of article it is and then put the, the information. And then if it needs review, you have to say the details are correct and it will be done. Uh, so it will just say that if it's missing, it will just suggest that these are things need review. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you identify it is that's correct, then it will no longer ask for this. Where you can link the reference list to the citation. What in Vindya uh, Vatelu? How can we link the reference list to the citation in main text? You mean when you click, it should go the other place? Is that what you mean? That is that usually that does not happen in papers, right? It's like you know, if you click on that one, it will go to the other one. You're saying you add. Usually, um, yeah, so I don't think that is possible for me to go from here. I have to check. Okay, uh, any other questions? Thank you for the very uh, informative webinar, sir. I'm sure it's been a very productive uh, few hours for each and every one of us. 
Uh, and my final invitation goes to Professor Terence Madhujit, the director of uh, URC, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Madhushani. In fact, it was a very informative uh, training by Dr. Asita Bandarnayak. I think we chose the correct person to do the training. Um, so first of all, uh, I should uh, appreciate on behalf of the URC for the great work done, starting with uh, finding the needle in a haystack, uh, how to use the more in new features, how to refine your uh, search was that was marvelous, followed by Mendeley. Uh, so you basically enlightened the audience on how to use almost all the features of Mendeley. Thank you very much for your um, the delivery of the material in such an interesting way. And also I should uh, thank uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor uh, Upul B. Disanak, and also Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Parakrama Karunaratna, who are always encouraging us to uh, do this work uh, on behalf of the, uh, the community, university community. And also uh, word of thanks goes to uh, Professor Pushya Kumara, Dean, Faculty of Agriculture, for kindly giving us permission to use the boardroom facilities, online facilities. And also Mr. Varuna, who is a technical officer attached to the uh, Faculty of Agriculture Dean's Office for his technical support. And last but not least, uh, the, all the audience who actively participated in the forum asking questions, uh, thank you very much. So we are organizing a few more trainings within the next few months to come. The one would be, the, we are planning to have one March 18, that is FTIR, Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy. And that would be uh, delivered both online as well as physically. So we will give all the information in the, few, in the next week. And also we are trying to uh, issue uh, an e-certificate to all participants. So those who, the participants who were with us throughout, hmm, uh, we'll be trying to uh, send you an e-certificate. So we will get the information that you already uh, given us during registration. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. With that, we have reached the end of today's program. I sincerely thank you all for your valuable participation. Stay safe. Thank you.